Welcome to Calmly Coping. My name is Tati and I'm a therapist and a high functioning anxiety coach. Each week you'll hear actionable tips and strategies that you can implement into your daily life so that you can overcome high functioning anxiety and start living a calm and balanced life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stress is, well, stressful and everybody experiences stress. It's a product of difficult situations, people, and circumstances. But what is the key to less stress? That's what I'm going to talk about in today's episode and how you might be making stress worse for yourself and how you can change that. So if this is something that interests you, then definitely keep on listening. So what is stress? Stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from any event or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. And it's your body's reaction to a challenge or to a demand. The difference between stress and anxiety is that stress occurs as a result of what is called a stressor. And so this is the thing that causes you to feel that tension as a result of something that's occurring, whereas anxiety is more persistent and can occur even in the absence of a stressor. So that means that in anxiety, maybe your thoughts and your worries are causing you to feel that tension and that unease when there's nothing right in front of you that's really causing you to feel stress. And so anxiety is when your thoughts are really contributing and creating a lot of that stress that you're experiencing. Stress is a common trigger for anxiety, but anxiety can feel a lot more intense and can be a lot more persistent. So now that we know the difference between stress and anxiety, how can you cope with the stress that comes up in your day-to-day life? So the thing is that everybody responds differently to different stressors and different situations. And there's some things that most people would agree are stressful, such as a serious trauma or the death of a loved one. But on the other hand, there's many small things that happen on a day-to-day basis that can elicit different responses depending on the person. So one person might respond in a rage to being cut off by another car, whereas somebody else might just shrug it off. So this is an example of the kinds of potentially stress-inducing situations that are crucial to pay attention to. While some people are focused on the big events in life, which are totally important, I'm focused on the small everyday occurrences because these things are the bulk of our experiences and ultimately shape the way you feel how you behave, and potentially who you are. So what causes you to get stress? Is it a massive to-do list, deadlines at work, a fight with your partner, or traffic? So these are the cornerstones of what causes stress, especially if you're constantly negatively reacting to every little thing that occurs. An important factor that influences your stress reaction is actually your baseline mood. So are you already feeling stressed because you're in a rush to get to work and now there's traffic? Or did you already not want to get out of bed this morning and now you have a major deadline at work? Your current mood has a big influence on how you're going to respond to stress. So becoming more mindful of your mood and what triggers you can really help you to understand what's going on. So maybe you're snapping at your significant other because you're stressed And a simple statement to your partner stating, I'm stressed about blank, so I'm not in the best mood, can really help to relieve tension in that communication. And this can also prevent your significant other from taking things personally, when in reality, it's because you're stressed and it's not personal. So these are all important things to be aware of, but what's really going to help you to react to stress differently? So the most important factor and the key to less stress is all in your interpretation of the stressor. How do you view it and what does it mean to you? Everybody experiences stress and it's completely normal. So it's not that it's something crazy or wrong with you if you get stressed out. So the problem occurs when stress becomes chronic and regular. And the way that we respond to stress occurs on a spectrum. And as complicated humans, we may lie on different parts of the spectrum at different moments. So here's how I interpret the two ends of the spectrum. So on one end, there's exploding over every little thing. And on the other extreme end, there's reacting calmly to stressors. So the question is, do you want to allow your circumstances to dictate your mood and how stressed you are? Or do you want to have a certain mood despite your circumstances? 
Now, again, nobody's perfect and it's impossible to never be influenced by the things that happen to you. However, it is possible to have more awareness to what triggers you and what stresses you out and what affects your mood so that you're not playing a victim to your circumstances and everything that happens to you throughout your day. And then your mood's going to be up and down and totally contingent on external circumstances. So first, let's talk about the one extreme of exploding over every little thing. So how does this happen? So you might be avoiding facing the problems in your life if you're exploding over every little thing, because this can often be a result of bottling up your emotions. And you might be using forms of distraction like watching TV, being a workaholic, drinking alcohol, or overeating, just as a few examples, as a way of avoiding your stress. The problem is that this doesn't make things go away. These things might make you feel better in the short term, but those feelings are always there under the surface. And after a while, this stress needs to come out. Things have been pushed down for so long that there's going to come a time soon when there needs to be a release of emotion. This may be why it seems like a tiny thing causes you to get bent out of shape, when in reality, it's a bunch of little things over time, or maybe one big thing that's been boiling over. The thing is, you might be avoiding looking at your triggers at all, and you've become blind in a way to what stresses you out. So the good news is, is that it's always possible to change your perception, although it's not always possible to change your circumstances. If you ever experience moments like this, then it's totally possible to change. Before we get to that, let's look at the other end of the spectrum, which is approaching to stressors calmly. So if you felt this way, maybe it's because you're in a good mood already. But if you consistently react like this, then you probably have an increased awareness of your emotions and you understand that things don't always happen as planned or as you want them to. And so you may be more flexible when certain things come up. So as a result, you have a different perception of the things that happen to you. You're not in that role of playing a victim to your circumstances, but you're taking control over the way you look at your life and the way that things happen. So this control may mean accepting that you don't always have control and you don't always have control over what happens to you. And that's okay. A stressor will only be as stressful as your interpretation of it. If you want to learn more about my step-by-step process to say goodbye to overwhelm, then make sure you click on the links in the show notes or go to calmlycoping.com slash overwhelm. I have a free guide that's going to help you dive deeper on how to get all of those thoughts and overwhelming what ifs out of your head. And this guide will walk you step-by-step through the process to completely organize your tasks and thoughts so you can prioritize what's most important and take intentional focused action. So make sure you click on the link in the show notes or go to calmlycoping.com slash overwhelm. So here are the things that might influence how you respond or react to stress. Your mood at the moment or in the events leading up to it, how aware you are of your emotions, and lastly, your perception of the stressor. And the good news is, is that you have control over at least two out of three of these things. So you have the ability to increase your awareness of your emotions, and you can change your perception of the stressor by changing your thoughts. So you can't always change your mood directly, but you can alter it just by having an awareness of your emotions and your thoughts. So first, let's talk about increasing your awareness of your emotions. So in order to do this, it's important to reflect and notice what's going on in your body, what's going on in your mind. So great ways to increase awareness of your emotions are through journaling, meditating, talking to somebody, like going to a coach or a therapist, and expressing your emotions creatively. Maybe it's through writing, drawing, or playing music. And now part two, which I talked about that's the key to less stress, is changing your perception of the stressor. So this can require some in-the-moment awareness of your thoughts and what's going on in reaction to the stressor. And this can be tough to do when emotions are heightened and you're already stressed. So it's important to first take some steps to relax and calm your body down. So some great ways to do that are by taking slow, deep breaths all the way into your belly. Another way to do that could be going for a walk taking a break from the situation or removing yourself from the stressor if possible, listening to calming music, or talking or venting your thoughts to somebody. So now when you're a little more relaxed, then it's time to tune into your thoughts and your perception of the stressor. 
And these are some questions that might help you to identify what's going on. So question number one is asking yourself, is there anything that I can do about this right now? Question two is asking yourself, how do I view this stressor? Question three, what does it mean to me? Question four, is getting stressed out helpful? And question five, is this really a big deal? So these questions are a great starting point to examine how you view the stressors in your life currently. You can ask yourself these questions in the moment or as a reflection after the fact. So let's apply these questions to the situation of getting cut off in traffic. So question number one, is there anything I can do about this? The answer is no. When you get cut off, you, you can't do anything about it. You can't control what's going on around you. Question two, how do I view this stressor? So let's say you view being cut off as disrespectful and this person is doing this because they don't respect you or they're being selfish or they're not aware of what's going on. Three, what does it mean to me? So it means that this person, I don't know, maybe you think they're an asshole. Number four, is getting stressed out helpful? In this situation, it might make you feel better temporarily, but it's really not helpful. It's not going to teach the other person a lesson, and it's not going to get you where you need to be any faster. And number five, is this really a big deal? No, it's not. Stuff like this happens all the time, and in the grand scheme of things, getting cut off is not a big deal. As long as there's no accident and everybody's safe, life moves on. So if you're able to implement and ask yourself these questions, or even any of the tips that I mentioned, like just becoming more aware of your emotions or practicing tips to relax yourself physically, then I know you're going to be on the way towards having more control over your stress response. And remember, this isn't a gimmick or a quick fix. This is a change in your relationship to how you perceive stress. And it will take time to change the way that you've been used to looking at things for years, if not your entire life. Stress is completely normal, but sometimes there's small changes that you can make in your perception so that you have more control over your mood and your life satisfaction. So I hope that these tips were helpful for you to cope with stress and to feel more in control of how you perceive the stressors in your life. So to wrap up, the three things that influence how you react or respond to stress are your mood at that moment, or in the events leading up to it, how aware you are of your emotions and your perception and how you think about the stressor. So I hope that these tips were helpful for you. And if you enjoyed this episode, then please feel free to screenshot yourself listening to it and share it on Instagram stories, tagging me at Tatiana G L P C until next time. Be calm. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you heard, please share this episode with a friend and please subscribe and leave me a review on iTunes. Also, remember to check me out online at calmlycoping.com and connect with me on Instagram at Tatiana G L P C. All content here is for informational purposes only. This content does not replace the professional judgment of your own mental health provider. Please consult a licensed mental health professional for all individual questions and issues. Till next time, I'm Tati, and this has been Calmly Coping.